Before beginning peri care, you must make sure that you wash your hands and bring all the supplies that you're going to need into the room before you begin the process. Again, before entering any room to perform any type of treatment or activity, you must knock on the door. You should pause, not enter directly upon knocking, waiting long enough for somebody to respond. Then knock again if you don't hear a response, and then you may enter the room, introduce yourself, and explain what you will be doing. When the individual comes in to provide peri care and they're greeting the resident, it's important if there's a surveyor or an instructor present or someone else that's going to be assisting, that person asks permission to have another person in the room. In this case, we're going to say it's an assistant. So what he has done is perfect. He's asked the resident's permission to have another individual in the room with him. And in this case, it was an assistant. This resident was unable to reply, being that Ms. Smith is non-responsive. The employee will assemble all the items necessary to provide the peri care. Remembering to bring in enough supplies and having supplies available prevents you from having to leave the room to get extra supplies. Remember to have two garbage receptacles available. Both must have liners. One is to be utilized for trash and the other for linen. Most often, we will use a bedside table for all the supplies needed to perform peri care. What you must remember is if you're using the bedside table, you must remove all items such as water pitchers, cups, and any other items that may be on the table. After removing all the items from the overbed table, you'll need to place a towel or a garbage bag as a protective barrier. If you don't have someone who's assisting you, you're going to want to take a plastic bag, folding back the top of that to be used for soiled linens. Always remember to raise the bed to a comfortable level for you to work. We must always ensure that we've provided privacy for the resident. The door to their room must be closed, the privacy curtain is pulled, even if the resident is in a private room or doesn't have a roommate, the curtain must be pulled, and a window must have the blinds closed or curtains pulled for privacy. Always before beginning any procedure, again, the employee must wash their hands. When washing your hands before any procedure, you want to make sure that you wash your hands for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. That's the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice and slowly. Make sure that you wash all the way up to your wrists, cleansing underneath your fingernails, in between your fingers, with good friction, remembering 20 to 30 seconds. When you're rinsing your hands, always rinse so that your fingers are pointing towards the ceiling, not down. When you begin to dry your hands, take a clean towel. Dry your hands, begin drying at the fingertips, and working farther up your wrist and lower arm. You want to remember that when you turn off the faucet, you'll be using a different towel to turn off the faucet. That means when you turn off these faucets to use a clean towel, not the one you dried your hands with. Make sure you remove plenty of gloves so that you can change them as often as you move and always, of course, when you're moving from clean to dirty. You also want to make sure that you have ample wipes so that you will use one wipe for every swipe that you make. You see that the nurse or the CNA is prepared and putting on their gloves and letting the resident know at all times what they're doing. Maintaining the dignity of a resident is always important. Let them know what you're doing. When preparing for peri care, you're going to have to uncover the resident. Make sure you tell them what you're doing. Gently remove the covers, giving you enough area to work comfortably on the resident. If the resident can assist you, you may ask the resident to help you spread their legs and bend their knees. If the resident cannot assist, you will do this for them. But still tell them what you're going to be doing. So the CNA or nurse has fully explained that they're going to be removing their brief and everything that's done is done very gently. There's no need for rushing here. That's how skin tears and bruising happens. Remember always working slowly and gently, please.
Recognize that for a resident who is alert and oriented, this can be very uncomfortable for them. They need to know what's going on and remember to respect their dignity. To begin, peri care on a female resident. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we completely spread the labia apart so that we can get a good wipe from the very top to the bottom, always moving top to bottom from clean to dirty. That's towards the anus. So the first swipe is going to be down the middle, remembering only to use the wipe once and discard. Still holding the labia apart, cleaning on the inside of one labia from the top to the bottom, and remember to start wiping at the area that is farthest away from you. One swipe, one wipe. Again, on the other side, inside the labia. So think, we've now had three wipes so far. You can continue to clean this area until all matter is removed, but only one wipe for each swipe. Now we'll take a clean wipe and wipe on the outside of the labia and throw that away. A new wipe on the other side of the labia and throw that away. Next, we will clean each side of the groin area using one wipe for each swipe and always wiping the area that's farthest away from us first. When we finish cleaning each side of the groin, we're going to wipe across the mons pubis. We're also going to wipe all the way up to where the top of the brief touches the abdomen. That can be even as high as the umbilicus or higher. All right, now we're going to clean over the inside of each thigh. We're going to make sure that we get around that hip as much as we possibly can. Getting another wipe, now we're moving to the other side and we're going to completely wipe the inside of that thigh. Taking a wipe and making sure that we get around that hip. Before asking the resident to roll over and to begin cleaning their anal and buttocks area, we need to change gloves. If the resident can assist you, you will request that they roll on their side. You might say to them, you're going to roll towards the window or towards the door. If the resident cannot assist you, you're going to tell them what you are doing. You're going to advise the resident that you're going to clean their bottom. You start from under the anus and clean upward towards the head away from the vagina. You will want to thoroughly cleanse the resident of any urine or feces using one wipe for each swipe. Now watch as we cleanse one complete area of the buttocks, wipe and discard, again working away from us first, and then we're going to clean the other buttocks will be wiped, one wipe, one swipe, we just can't reinforce that enough. Make sure you always get a good cleansing of the outer hip, any area which is covered by the brief, or any area that you see needs additional cleansing. Now, gently roll up the brief and discard in the garbage receptacle. Notice there was no need to pull the brief out from underneath the resident. Pulling can cause shearing, tear the skin, or cause the resident discomfort. If the linens are soiled, you may need to determine what needs to be changed at this time. Remember that you have two garbage receptacles, one for trash, the other for linen. The linen that is soiled would be placed into the soiled garbage area. The attendant has held on to the resident and has an assistant. We've affirmed that this resident is safe and secure on the bed and that she is not going to roll off. The attendant can now effectively remove his gloves because he knows that he is completing what he would consider to be the dirty aspect of care. That means the contaminated part. Now we're moving to what we consider the clean aspect of care. We have clean gloves on before we apply the clean brief. We're checking to make sure that we don't need to change the pad. Everything we're doing now, we're doing with a gentle motion. There's no rushing. That's what causes skin tears and injury to the resident. And it can be kind of scary, so make sure that you're telling the resident what you're doing. In almost all instances with peri care, there will be a need for an application of a barrier cream. An over-the-counter or facility-acceptable barrier cream may be applied by the CNA. If a medically prescribed barrier cream is to be applied, the nurse must perform this as a treatment. 
Note that if the assistant needs more barrier cream, he would not touch his glove with the tube in any way, but keep a far enough distance away so that he does not contaminate the tube with the hand that has already touched the residence. Now you're watching our attendant apply cream on the buttocks. This is a barrier cream. And remove the barrier cream glove that you've used, applying a new glove before you continue with the remainder of peri care. If necessary, you might want to put on a complete new pair of gloves, and there's no problem with doing that either. Now we're rolling the resident back over. I always want to keep reiterating to you or keep telling you that every motion needs to be gentle. You need to work with respect and with dignity. Tell the resident what you're doing. And gently applying the brief, connecting the side tab so that it will stay in place and be secure. If this resident were alert, you would ask if they were comfortable. Is it too tight, too loose? If the resident can respond, you'll act accordingly. If not, just make sure that you test and have at least two finger width between the brief and the resident. Notice how everything that we're touching is clean and having an assistant makes this so much easier. The resident has been cleaned, maintaining the resident's dignity. We're getting the resident recovered, more comfortable, making sure that the resident is positioned appropriately. If the resident does require positioning, remember to place the call bell right next to the resident. Recall yourself that even if the resident is comatose or unable to respond, there must be a call bell next to every resident at all times. It's important when you complete the procedure to make sure that you return the bed to the appropriate level. You're going to want to lower the bed and you want to check the care plan to make sure the level of which the bed should be for the resident. The nurse who performed all this treatment is removing the gloves and placing them in the garbage. The nurse, when completing all the care with the resident, will wash their hands, return to the resident's area, see if she's comfortable again. Make sure that you open the window shades, ask the resident if they want the windows open, return the pitcher to the overbed table, making sure the resident has water. And finally, before leaving the room, you're going to want to make sure that you take the cuff from underneath the garbage, pulling it up over the top, tying a knot, doing the same with the linen, and then you can leave the room. After depositing the garbage and the linen, make sure you wash your hands before you return to any future resident care. Peri care with a resident that has a Foley catheter is done almost identically to that of a resident that does not have a Foley. So what we're going to see when you have a Foley is that you need to first look that there is a leg strap on and there should always be one. Loosen that, take it off. We want you then with your gloves on to make sure that you hold the catheter as close to the meatus without touching the meatus as possible. And that's just to secure the catheter so that there's no pulling or tugging for the resident and so that the catheter is not dislodged. Gently use one wipe in a circular fashion away from the meatus about three to four inches to cleanse the catheter. You can do this several times. Make sure the tubing is thoroughly cleansed always making sure that you reattach the Foley if it has come away from the leg band. All Foley catheters must be attached to a leg band at all times. When working with Foley catheters, you want to make sure that you keep the bag below the level of the bladder at all times. If at all possible, we like to use Foley bags that are manufactured with an attached dignity cover and one that has a valve that prevents the contents from the urine from returning to the bladder. If the Foley bag does not come attached with a dignity cover, you need to cover the bag with a Foley cover. Peri care for males. Just as with the female resident, all preparation is completed. After you've washed your hands, assembled all your supplies, and ready to begin, you will don gloves. When we deal with incontinence care of a male individual, we want to highlight for you some of the most important things that you need to remember. If the resident is not circumcised, you will first want to retract the foreskin. Using a circular motion starting at the meatus, work outward, utilizing one swipe. 
Use another wipe to gently cleanse the heads of the penis, always in a circular motion, throwing the wipe away. Utilizing a new swipe, utilizing a circular motion, cleanse the shaft of the penis. Remember to replace the foreskin. You will cleanse the scrotal sac with one wipe, one swipe. Remember to gently lift the scrotal sac and be sure to cleanse underneath. Then you'll proceed to clean the resident the same as the female, moving to the groin, above the pubis, to the umbilicus, thighs, hips, turning and cleaning the anus, buttocks, and hips, just as you saw demonstrated previously with the same amount of glove changes and utilizing only one wipe and swipe. Points we want you to remember. Privacy. Always knocking before you walk in a room. Pulling curtains. Closing blinds. Telling the resident what you're doing. When you move from a clean to a dirty area or whenever you feel necessary, change your gloves. Never be worried that you're changing your gloves too often. Remembering one wipe for one swipe. I think the most important advice that I can give you is to ask for an assistant. Have someone join you in the room. It makes it much easier and it goes much faster for you and it's more comfortable for the resident. Always watch and check your own organization's policies and procedure manuals before you begin peri care for a male or a female with or without a Foley catheter. We hope this has been a help to you. Thank <laughs> you.